Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. And what better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Are you Mrs. Olson from Abraham Lincoln Elementary? Yes, I am. Are, are you? Oh, oh, don't tell me. Mrs. B from Oak Grove Elementary? Yeah, Medford, Oregon, right? Yes, Medford, Oregon. I teach kindergarten. What grade do you teach? I teach first grade. Huh. Well, it's fancy seeing you here, and I wish we could be a little closer, but I sure am glad that we're practicing social distancing. Even underwater. We're pretty far apart. That's good. But we could swim close by, though, just mm -hmm. not too close, right? Right. Well... I wish we could go to the ocean. Me too. I've been super cramped up in my house, and I just love the ocean. Me too, but, you know, the beaches are closed. We're not allowed to go. Oh, well, what could we do? Hmm. Well, oh, I, I know a lot about sharks, and I, I brought some things here today. <laughs> I brought an octopus and a whale. Do, do you think we could learn about the ocean instead? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, I think I actually have a... Fun slipper fact to get us started. All right, guys, we're going to get our lesson going with our first fun flipper fact. Uh, around 70% of Earth's surface is covered by oceans. The largest ocean, ocean on Earth is the Pacific Ocean, which covers around 30% of the Earth's surface. Waves are formed when the wind blows across the sea, transferring its energy into the water. Waves can appear to get higher or lower on the beach, and we call this a tide. Tides are caused by the Earth rotating while the moon and sun's gravitational pull acts on ocean water. Welcome back, to, back for a fun flipper fact. Did you know that the largest animal in the world on land or sea is the blue whale? It's actually about 70 to 90 feet long, which is a little longer than two school buses. It's not just long. The blue whale weighs 100 to 150 tons, which is as heavy as eight school buses. Its favorite food is called krill. Krill is only about three inches long. So a whale eats about 8,000 pounds of krill a day. That would be like eating 32,000 quarter pound hamburger patties. Wow. Well, thanks, Mrs. B. I learned a lot about the ocean so far today. I just learned some fun facts about blue whales. One thing my family loves to do when we go to the ocean is to fish. And sometimes we stand on the docks and fish, and sometimes we go out in a small little dinghy or boat to fish. But what you need to fish is a fishing pole, right? So I brought my handy-dandy fishing pole, and I'm going to be very safe with it because I don't want to hurt anybody else around me with my fishing pole. But I also wanted to mix in a little math because I love math and I brought some different tools for measurement today. So measurement is how we figure out how long or short something is. So I brought a few different things that some of you might have seen in your classroom or at your home. This is called a unifix cube. So one unifix cube would be one cube of measurement, right? So then I also brought sticky notes or post-its. Did you know you can also use post-its as a form of measurement or measuring something? So this would be one sticky note. Very good. And then lastly, you might have seen this. It's called a ruler. And a ruler is a great way to measure. There's different um, forms of measurement on here. There's inches and centimeters. So we're going to go fishing um, for some different sea creatures, and then you're going to help me measure them. All right, let's get ready. I got to get my fishing pole. I got to get ready and I'm going to, oh, 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 goodness. Oh, goodness me. Oh, let me take this off my pole. Oh, safely. Thank you. Whoa, that was hard to get that off of the pole without hurting myself. Oh, wow. Oh, how did I even get so lucky to catch one of my favorite creatures, a sea star? 
You at home might have seen this creature. Generally, it lives in tide pools. And tide pools are shallow yet rocky areas kind of near the shore. So the water or the tides come in and out. And at certain times, we're able to explore safely and learn about the tide pool creatures. So this is called a sea star. Some of you might have heard it called something else called a starfish. And it kind of resembles a star, right? Let's count its legs. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, let's count in Spanish. Espanol, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Oh, muy bien, okay, so this is a five-legged creature. And something kind of really neat about it is it's got a rough sandpaper-like body. It also has a mouth all the way down at the bottom to eat some ocean delights. So I think that what I need to do first is figure out how I'm going to measure my um, sea star. I could use a unifix cube. Hmm. Could use a post-it or two. Hmm. I think I'm going to start with my ruler. Um, one thing I've learned going to teacher school is that when I'm measuring, I always have to start at the edge, okay? So I can't just put my C star in the middle of the ruler, that won't work. I have to start at the edge, okay? So I'm gonna go right here. It's kind of tricky to see. I'll hold it a little bit better for you to see. And I'm gonna look, oh, my C star is one and one half inch. One and one half inch. Wow, so now I know that my C star is Kind of long, kind of short. It might be a little baby. Um, okay, little sea star, have a good day. Thanks for coming. I think I want to go fishing. Maybe I'll catch a bigger animal. Let's see. Okay. Oh, God. oh goodness. This creature looks very familiar. We learned about this creature with Mrs. B earlier. Oh, I love this creature. It's a blue whale, and it's actually an itty-bitty baby blue whale. So remember what Mrs. B told us, that blue whales are large animals. They're the largest animals on the planet, is what most people think. And guess what? They're mammals of the sea, like you and I, which is kind of rare. There's not a ton of mammals in the sea. So this is a baby. So Mama blue whales may have babies that grow in their tummy and they give live birth just like humans, and that's why they're called mammals. So I'd love to figure out what would be the best unit of measurement for my baby blue whale. I already used my ruler. Ooh, I think I'm going to use my unit fix cubes. Ooh la la. Okay, so let's see. If I put my whale down in front of me, I'm going to remember what I learned earlier is that I need to start on one side, okay? So I can't just willy-nilly start placing unifix cubes everywhere, right? I need to start to make a little chain of unifix cubes. And I'm going to go ahead and put it starting at one side. So either the tail or the head. I think I'm going to start at the tail. So, so far I have one, two, three unifix cubes. My baby blue whale is a lot longer than that. Okay, let's keep counting. We're at three, four... Five, six, who's getting exciting? Seven, eight. <gasps> wow, she's longer than eight. Unifix cubes, nine, <gasps> ten. Oh, I'm getting close. Eleven. <gasps> 12, 13. My baby blue whale is 13 unifix cubes long. Holy guacamole. Oh, let's do some uh, counting in Espanol. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Unso, unce, doce, trece. Oh, trece. 13. Oh, holy smokes, that was fun. Okay, so we've gotten to measure with unifix cubes and a ruler. Adios, baby blue whale. We'll see you soon. 
All right, my friends, let's see. Let's go fishing one more time because I'm having a lot of fun. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, whoa. Oh, 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 gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. All right, I'm going to be careful with this one. Oh, goodness. Okay, I don't know if you can. Oh, I got to set this one down. Oof. My, oh, my. I don't know if you or your family know about this, but this is one of the most dangerous sea creatures out there. It is called a blue ringed octopus. <gasps> it's a venomous creature, but guess what? It does not create its own venom, which is rare. What it does do is it goes into the ocean and it takes different parts of little plants and it has bacteria in its mouth and it creates very venomous or poisonous saliva. And that's how it stuns its prey or the things it eats. Um, it's really pretty small when you normally see it. This is a quite a large one. And it lives in shallow areas in places like Australia or Japan. And it's called the blue ringed octopus because when it gets upset, or when it's hunting something, all of a sudden little parts of its body come out from the folds of its skin with blue rings. So look out for this guy, but guess what? It's pretty neat to learn about such a magnificent creature. And it's not a creature that goes looking for trouble. So if we leave it alone, it'll leave us alone. All right, we've done our ruler, we've done our unifix cubes. Please be nice to me, sweet blue ring Dr. Pie. Okay. So I'm gonna use my sticky notes. I wanted to mention something to you too. If I used sticky notes and I use Unifix cubes on my blue ring octopi, I would get more Unifix cubes than sticky notes. And I wonder why that is, hmm. Okay, well, oh, because look, a Unifix cube is a smaller unit of measurement than a sticky note. So if you have a larger unit of measurement, you're gonna have less of them. If you have a smaller unit of measurement, you're gonna have less. Okay, so you're gonna have more if they're big, less if they're small when you're measuring. So this little cutie, he's got one, two. Okay, good guy, I'm not hurting him right now, so he's not hurting me. I love the ocean, three. Oh goodness, it's kind of tricky to measure an animal that's not so straight, has these curly Q eight tentacles. We know that about octopi. They have eight tentacles. One, two, three, four, five. Holy guacamole. Okay, I love it. Five. Let's see if we can count in Espanol, friends. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Cinco. Post-it notes long, Woof. Okay, I'm gonna let him go gently. Thanks for hanging out with us, blue ringed octopi. I'm respecting you, I hope you respect me. Adios. Time for another fun flipper fact. Whew, just keeps getting better with time. Let's talk about sharks. Sharks are some of my favorites. There are over 350 different kinds of sharks. Some are as big as a fire truck, and others are so small that they could fit into your hand. Whew. Sharks are known as predators, meaning they hunt for their own food. A shark's skeleton is made of cartilage, which is the same as our nose or our ears. Uh, it bends easier than bone, so it can bend and twist and turn quickly when it's swimming. Wow, I just love sharks so much. I, I hope that Mrs. B brought a little bit more of her fun shark facts to, to share with us, and I think she brought something kind of cool. Let's see. Hey, learners at home. I have something very exciting to show you. So sharks are one of um, the coolest creatures under the sea, if you ask me. And my son, Jack, let me borrow his book today. And it's an I Can Read book about amazing sharks. So I learned a lot from this book, but I also learned a lot because my dad used to be a teacher too. And he taught science. He bought this incredible artifact. This is actually 
a real shark jaw. Now, Mrs. Olson just taught us that um, sharks' bodies are mostly made of cartilage. So our noses are made of cartilage and our ears are made of cartilage. That makes it flexible. But there are certain parts of a shark's body that have bone. And so here is a shark jaw. Now, something that is very different about a shark and how you can tell it's a shark is that the shark's mouth doesn't just open like a fish's mouth. So a fish's mouth is going to open, open, closed, open, closed. But watch what I do with my thumb right here. I'm actually going to shift it backwards because a shark's mouth, his nose is the pointy part and his jaw opens down. It's almost on the bottom of his mouth. Now, if I don't know if you can see this at home, but here is a cool picture of a shark in Jack's book. And you can see my um, example with a real picture. See how the shark's nose is right here on the tip? And here's the, the um, kind of like an upper lip part. And his mouth is actually on the bottom of his body. And why that is important is that when a shark's jaw opens, this is his jaw, you can trace your jaw with your finger, it goes from your ear, and it's a hard bone that goes all the way down to your chin and all the way back up to your ear. That's your jaw. We open ah, and close our jaw when we eat food and when we speak. And so a shark needs to open its jaw extra wide when it wants to eat food. And so this shark jaw when it is on the shark, when it was, when this was a real shark and it was in the shark's body, it wasn't open like this, like a mouth would be for a human. It was actually like this. So his mouth would be closed down. And when he was ready to eat, he would open his jaw all the way up. Remember Mrs. Olson told us about sharks being very flexible because of that cartilage that they're made of. And so his nose and his whole body could open up so that his jaw could open up extra wide. Now, this shark died of natural causes and um, this washed up on the shore and someone preserved it and dried out this piece of his um, body and was able to sell it. But um, that's why I have it today. We didn't kill the shark or anything like that. But here is the coolest part about a shark jaw and why it's so special that I have it. Shark teeth are incredible. If they lose a tooth, which sometimes happens when they bite into something, they might have a wiggly tooth and it just pops off and maybe it stays um, in that fish that it was trying to eat. And so they lose their teeth all the time. But when they lose teeth, kind of like when you lose your baby teeth, a new tooth grows in. Now, humans only get two sets of teeth. So I know Mrs. Olson's kindergartners and my first graders and some second graders, you get wiggly teeth and that tooth pops out and then a new adult tooth pops in or grows up. But a shark, shark have incredible amounts of teeth. And if you can see inside this shark jaw, there are layers upon layers of shark teeth. I can count at least six layers of teeth. So going across, there's about 20 to 30 teeth going around the jaw and behind each tooth that we see standing up, there are six other teeth waiting to fold up. In fact, you can kind of see that some of the teeth are already getting ready to fold up. So there are many times teeth that there's one standing straight up, just like our teeth stand straight up, and another one kind of folding its way, ready to take its spot if this one wiggles and falls out. Um, the other interesting thing about shark teeth is that instead of being chewers, like we have to chew food, so our teeth are flat, they are pointed. And that's because they're grippers. They're going to grab their food and pull it and then just swallow it. So they're not sitting and chewing their food or swimming and chewing their food. In fact, their teeth are shaped pointed so that they can grip easier onto the prey, whatever um, animal that they're choosing to eat. And on the sides of their tooth, it's kind of like a saw. Have you ever seen a saw? Maybe in your parents' garage, or maybe you've read a book or seen a movie about a lumberjack or someone that um, cuts wood down for a living, and they have a saw, and it has, it almost looks like teeth. Another thing you might have in your house that you recognize is a bread knife. There's a special kind of knife that has 
points on it. And those points are just like the side of these teeth. They're jagged. And the reason that a shark's tooth is jagged is for that gripping and ripping. That's how shark eat their food. They grip and rip and swallow. It's pretty incredible. Now, I know that sharks can feel like a scary creature, but one thing that I teach my students is that the more you know about something, the more interesting they become. And there's less fear around those creatures that you now know a lot of facts about. So if you're interested in learning about sharks, I encourage you to look up videos on the internet or learn some different songs you can sing about them or find some books like my my son Jack's book, or talk to your teachers. But the more you learn about things, the better you feel when um, you have a little bit of fear around them. So I hope you had fun learning about shark's teeth and um, about sharks. In fact, one more thing I forgot. I actually have teeth that I found on a beach. Now, what's kind of crazy is they can look a little bit like shells. They're so tiny, but you can see they're so tiny. Over time, the ocean and the sand makes them smoother. So these teeth no longer have the jagged sides like the saw or like the bread knife, but they're pretty cool um, artifacts of a shark that lived uh, quite a long time ago. So very cool things. The next time on your you're on a beach, maybe you'll find some tiny shark teeth for yourself and happy learning at home. Are you ready for another fun flipper fact? I am. This one is about the beluga whale. A beluga is a white whale that has teeth and a big forehead that they call a melon. It's one of the smallest species of whale. Belugas are very social and live with others just like them in something called a pod. They communicate using different sounds like clicks, whistles, and clangs. They can also copy other sounds that they hear. Belugas can swim backwards, something that most whales can't do. Hey, I know a song about a beluga. Mrs. Olson is going to show it to us now. Oh, well, I'm glad I learned a little bit more about beluga whales because one of my very favorite songs to sing is Baby Beluga. And it's another fun book by a fantastic children's musician named Raffi. If you ever want to look up his songs, just type in R-A-F-F-I on YouTube and lots of fun songs will pop up. Um, he is the um, singer or um, the author of this book. The illustrator is Ashley Wolf. So we're going to, hopefully, if Mrs. B will join me, we're going to sing together to you about the baby beluga whale. All right, friends, again, this story is called Baby Beluga, and we're going to sing it. It's written by Raffi, and it's illustrated by Ashley Wolf. Hope Mrs. B sings along with me. Here we go. One, two, three. Baby, Baby Beluga in the deep blue sea. You swim so wild and you swim so free. Skies above and the sea below and a little white whale on the go. Baby beluga, baby beluga, is the water warm? Is your mama home with you so happy? Way down yonder where the dolphins play. Where you dive and splash all day, waves roll in and the waves roll out. See the water squirting out of your spout. Baby beluga, oh baby beluga, sing your little song. Sing for all your friends, we like to hear you. When it's dark in your home and fed, curl up snug in your water bed. Moon is shining and the stars are out. Good night, little whale, good night. Baby beluga, oh baby beluga, with tomorrow's sun, another day's begun, you'll soon be waking. Baby 
baby beluga in the deep blue sea. Swim so wild and you swim so free. Skies above and the sea below and a little white whale on the go. You're just a little white whale on the go. Well, I had fun with you today, Mrs. Olson. I had so much fun, Mrs. B. Thanks for cheering me up, yeah. getting me out of the house and going on this ocean adventure. Yeah, I learned a lot of facts about belugas and measurement and sharks. I did as well, and I'm getting a little hungry. I think I'm going to swim home and have a bite of a sandwich. <laughs> okay. Well, see you later. All right. Well, thanks for watching Medford Anywhere Learning TV, and we hope to see you guys and gals soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning, and learning is for all. Miss Wallace, I miss you a bunch. Um, I hope that... Um, this virus stops so we can, so I can see you, um, more. Miss you. We love you, we love you. We love you. I wanted to say hi to Miss Jossie's class and all my friends at Jacksonville, and I miss you. Bye. Hello, my name is Christian Chavez, and I go to KUA's charter school, and I want to give a huge shout out to Miss Kay Derrickson. She is highly respected with my family and I, and I just wanted to let her know that she is super important to me because she helps me with my education, and I hope she stays safe. Mr. Smith, I love you. Thank you, Mrs. Pardo and Mrs. Manili. We miss you and love you. Bye. I appreciate Mrs. Valois because she's very hardworking, easy to talk to, and loving and understanding to all her students. Thank you for all your hard work. This is Beard. I miss you. Thank you, Miss Yanka, for everything you do. I miss you. Hi, Mr. Romery and Senora Weinchild. Thank you for all you've done for me. Hi, Mrs. Zen. I'm making you a cat because I miss you so much. I hate being on camera but I wanted to let my teachers know how much I love them and how much I miss them. Thank you guys for being the best and the greatest. Thank you so much for teaching me. Hi, my name is Natalia and I go to Lone Pine School. My teachers are Ms. Southmead and Ms. LaBelle. I want to thank them for always supporting me even through this hard time with coronavirus and doing Zoom calls to teach each other every Wednesday. I just want to thank you, Ms. S and Ms. L. And thank you all teachers. I appreciate you. Bye. The teacher that I am thankful for is Mrs. Fowler. She's always very caring and pushes me to my limits and is always smiling. You're the best teacher ever, Mr. Mickerson. I miss you. Hi, my name is Taylor and I go to Abraham Lincoln Elementary and my teacher is Mr. Allman and I miss all my friends. Hi, Mrs. Abby. Thanks for being my teacher. I really, really miss you. This is Carson, and thank you for everything that you do. I miss you. Thank you. Toss, and I miss you a lot. I can't wait to see you. Bye. Hi, Miss Alderman. I appreciate you because um, you work so hard for our class to take care of us, and I miss you. Say hi, Miss Carson, for being my teacher. Hey, Team 72 teachers. Thanks for being so great. I miss you. Go Bulldogs. Hey, just wanted to give a shout out to Miss Mie's class at Jacksonville Elementary. And a hi to all the students, staff, and teachers. I miss you. Bye. Hello, I am Malachi. I go to Lone Pine School. My teacher is Mrs. Mock, and I want to thank her so much for helping me out on math problems, reading problems, my writing, and all of my school stuff. Even though we're farther away and we can't like talk to each other or more, um, she's still been helping me out a lot. Well, thank you, Miss Mock, bye. Um, I love you, Mrs. Fieldtime, so much because, because you're so kind and nice. Hi, Mrs. Joy. Thank you for all the hard work that you've done to keep us going on a school walk. You're a really good teacher. I miss you. 
Hi, this is Bennett. I love you. I'm so glad you're my teacher this year. And, and I hope you're doing good. Bye.